Okay, let's look at some convergence and divergence now. There's no problem 11 on the test. The error I will fix for our final exam. So let's go straight to problem 12. And here's what I think about problem 12. And there might be more than one way to approach some of these problems. But when n gets big, 2 to the power of n is absolutely enormous compared to n. So when n is big, as n approaches infinity, this 2 to the power of n is really the only thing that's, that matters. This n might as well not be there. It's so much smaller compared to everything else. And if we didn't, have the n there, we would have a convergent geometric series. So the argument I want to make is that these terms look like these terms, and this series converges so this series converges. And the correct way to make that argument is the limit comparison test. And this might be slightly tricky, Actually, just because it's so, I mean, first of all, this is indeterminate, infinity over infinity. To take this limit, we need L'Hopital's rule. To do that, we need to be able to take the derivatives of these exponential functions. And that might be a bit of a stumbling block because we've spent both this semester and last semester looking specifically at e to the power of x or to the power of n in this case. If you have a different base, it just means you get a constant in front of the exponential. The derivative of 2 to the power of n is 2 to the power of n times something. And this is still indeterminate. We can take the derivative again. And this time, we no longer have an indeterminate form. Everything cancels. This limit is 1. And all we needed was a finite limit that's greater than 0. The limit comparison test says, that this series and this series share either convergence or divergence. This series converges. This series converges. And that's how we're right through number 13. Again, might be more than one way of doing this. 
what I see when I see this, though, is the integral test. We can integrate this expression using u substitution. And this converges if and only if this converges. And we just did 10 integral problems. So I want to move through this a little quickly. I used u substitution to find the antiderivative. I replaced this infinity sign with k and that k go to infinity. And this integral is finite. So this sum is finite. When I see powers and exponentials, I think the ratio test. Because powers and exponentials both work well when you have ratios. So we'll take a sub n plus one. So be a little careful here. Not to make any little typos as it were. Divide it by a sub n and simplify this thing. So I multiply numerator and denominator of this big fraction by the reciprocal of this smaller fraction. And I haven't done any simplification yet. But now I'll say that 2n plus 1 factorial is 2n plus 1 times 2n times 2n minus 1 factorial. So we get the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1, if we foil out this, over n squared times 1 over 2n times 2n plus 1. You can use L'Hopital's rule or other means to show that as n goes to infinity, this goes to 1. This goes to zero. So the limit is zero. And anything less than one gives convergence. Fifteen. You could use the nth term test, actually, because as n goes to infinity, these, these terms are not going to zero. But that might not be obvious, and you can't like use L'Hopital's rule to show it because we can't take the derivative of n factorial. This is probably easiest done. As a second at application of 
the ratio test. I'm going to simplify this. And my notation's sloppy, but we'll write in the limit now we're taking the limit of this ratio as n goes to infinity. This is one fifth. This is. Sorry about that. I was thinking, hold on, this isn't what I was expecting to happen. And that's because I made that error. This is n plus one. And just like I said should happen using the nth term test, this limit is greater than one. So this series diverges. 16. 16 is a classic limit comparison test. As I say, there might, there might always be more than one way to approach a problem, but this is crying out to be approached as follows. As n goes to infinity, this plus two is basically no longer doing anything. Like the difference between a trailing squared plus two and a trailing squared is insignificant. And similarly, as n gets very big, this plus five is really not doing anything. A trail into the fourth plus five versus a trail in. That's essentially a trail into the fourth. And if these terms look like these terms. Well, these terms converge. This is a convergent P series. So these terms should also converge. And we have to formalize that kind of argument using the limit comparison test. And we wind up with this limit. And you can use L'Hopital's rule if need be, or maybe you can just see that this has a horizontal asymptote, but this limit is one. And all we need with the limit comparison test is that this limit should be positive and finite. And one, is both those things. With 17, I, I mean, I wrote this test a while ago. I have no memory of it. I can't remember, therefore, if I was trying to be tricky here or if there was a typo. I mean, we'll do the problem as it's written. It looks, this looks like the limit comparison test at first glance, 
not limit comparison, sorry, alternating series test at first glance, because this negative one to the power of n makes this an alternating series, but actually it's the nth term test. As n goes to infinity, these terms converge to two-thirds. So the terms of the series are getting closer and closer to looking like this. And the alternate, not alternating, the limit comparison test says, never mind the summation. If this limit isn't going to one, geez, sorry, this problem is causing me to misspeak. I don't know why. If the limit isn't going to zero, we have divergence. And as n increases, these terms are flipping between being close to two thirds and close to negative two thirds, but they're not going to zero. So this thing diverges.